welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at a top hun from my old company, It Works. I think I reacted to one of her videos before and we're going to be doing that again today. Let's see why I saved this video because I certainly don't remember after my long hiatus. In it, since I've gone live, it has been a really long time. And uh, happy Wednesday, getting ready to end another successful month. Uh, in businesses, uh, super excited about some things that I'm going to be dropping to my email list. So make sure you get on that. If you're not, hello, hello, jump on, say hello. I just got like chapstick everywhere else. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, but I want to come on and tell you ways that you can learn from my mistakes. How many of you are wanting to chase after six? Sorry, we're 41 seconds in, but let's all learn from her biggest mistake, which is reaching the top of a alleged, in my opinion, triangle shaped business structure and bragging about it online. Like she's doing something good. Let's all learn from that mistake first. Success, you're wanting to get up and get after it. You're wanting your life to change whatever that looks like, whatever, whatever you need for your calling, for your purpose. And along the way, your girl is definitely a knucklehead. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hello, Christina. Hello. Hello. Hey, cat. Okay. Your girl's definitely been a knucklehead along the way. And, uh, and I have, I've made some mistakes. Okay. Everybody does. Who doesn't? Like failure is a part of the process. Mistakes are a part of the process. But I kind of want to come on and just share some of the mistakes that I have made in ways that you can learn. As you are trying to better your life and better your mindset, you're trying to make a better world for yourself, for your kids, for your family, there's going to have to be some compromise. And there's going to have to be some things that shift and change and this is a lot of why people hold themselves back. People will hold themselves back because they value the comfort of staying where they're at because the idea of change is scary. Now, if you're anything like me, the idea of being stressed out in an MLM is what's scary to people and not having consistent finances, which no, if you're in an MLM, it is not consistent. Um, it does not give you comfort, peace of mind, unless your partner makes enough to where if you lose a little bit of money and you make extra, it's not that big of a deal. Being in an MLM doesn't really give you any sort of security. I always hate getting a new phone. Are you like that? Do you enjoy getting a new phone? I cannot stand getting a new phone. I always have to take a screenshot of where all my icons are because I am a habitual person, okay? I'm driven by, I'm not a very disciplined person. I'm very habitual and there is a massive difference there, okay? I talk a lot about color personalities. That could be the difference between being a green and a blue. I'm a blue, I'm very habitual. And I just like have a flow of where my fingers push and Anytime we, I get a new phone or I have to upgrade, I'm so afraid that like my, my messenger not going to be where my messenger is and then I'm going to be opening up my bank app for like five weeks until I create a new habit, okay? So like change is not fun. Change is hard, okay? I don't know anybody that really enjoys it, but one thing that I've learned is the more that I shift, the more that I learn to evolve and adapt um, and change the little habits that I have, the more like success that I can welcome in. So many of us, we're caught at, on a bottom dweller level. You are caught at the bottom of the freaking ocean. Like you're not, you know, and you, you wanna- Does that mean I'm a bottom dweller? I don't know. This is also the same lady that calls people low functioning, which if you're not familiar about things people say about autism, they use terms like, high functioning, low functioning, stuff like that. And it just, it can make people feel like you're trying to throw them a pity party and who wants to be pitied. I certainly don't. Calling someone low functioning just makes you sound like an ass hat. 
to me it holds the same weight as someone saying the r word like why are you saying that out loud as a public figure calling people bottom dwellers and low functioning not in this video i think it's in a different video that she has on her page but ew. evolve and go from being this bottom dweller to be in this whale that jumps out of the water or a dolphin right like so there's got to be an evolution of growth so with that being said there's things that I had to change that I truly feel like some of you can benefit from this, okay? And the first one is what I'm wearing, all right? My clothes and how I dress, for me to have the level of success that I have right now, had to change. Here's why. I was wasting so much time trying to figure out what I was gonna wear the next day. Like, be dead honest, is that you? I was wasting money on cheap items that were just going to fall apart after three or four washes. I was like, I felt like buying a shirt from Target, which there ain't nothing wrong with Target. Okay. Uh, but I felt like going and buying like cheaper clothes would bring me a sense of fulfillment. It was a waste of money. It was a waste of time. And I was wasting time in my day from being productive, from moving my life forward because yeah, I'm going to go ahead and interpret this for you through the lens of someone who is in at works had the uh, unfortunate circumstance of talking with a number of people who were higher ranking than myself. In my opinion, what she's really alluding to here is she had to cut away time somehow to give more time to her MLN. And she's gonna call that whatever she's gonna call that to make it sound better, like that's not what she did. But she was trying to find another way to cut out time. And sure, like be comfortable, dress however the fuck you want, but don't you don't need to chip away at every single thing in your life to make time for your MLN. That's that's when we get into culty territory. I'm standing naked in the closet or wrapped up in a towel trying to figure out what I'm gonna wear for the day, okay? So when I was first on this journey of success, I quickly had to realize where are my time wasters? You guys, we talk so much about how valuable time is. We talk so much about how, you know, time is the one thing that you can never get back, but man, some of y'all shall be wasting it on trivial things that don't matter. And I had to realize at that time what was more important for me. Um, obviously the way that I look is important to me. My appearance, I would love, like I don't wash my hair but every you know week, uh, once a week because of my purple. But being able to like take photos and be on camera, it's, it matters to me, okay? So every day I make a commitment to get presentable. I am presentable, I did my face, okay, even though. Hi. If you, you're watching this, and just just my opinion here, as someone who has has left an MLM and a, in my opinion, controlling religion, <clears throat> as long as you are not exposing your private parts, you're presentable. I, I'm presentable, and I'm wearing a sweater and underneath a t-shirt from high school, because for some reason this pregnancy, I'm cold. So I'm wearing a sweater and I have my hair in these crazy buttons and they're gonna stay in there for like at least two days. Presentable, I don't have makeup on cause I'm, I'm not about to ruin my fucking day with sensory issues, I'm just not doing it. This is presentable, just I, I feel like you should know that and I feel like it's more relatable to just show your bare face. And that's not to shame anyone who wear makeups, like do, do whatever makeups, do whatever makes you feel like a bad bitch. But just know you don't have to put makeup on to be presentable. Look at my skin, y'all. Ain't no foundation on. Ain't no foundation on. <laughs> I just got good skin. Now, I have a filter. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, so I look presentable every morning, but I'm not out trying to like dress up. So what did I have to do? Four years ago when I was, I was not making multiple five figures a month like I am now, okay? Four years ago when I was making like $500, I decided back when I was only scamming like 10 people, I decided to go to Target and get their V-neck female shirts, which they're typically like uh, one for 10 or three for $24. I don't know, they're like eight bucks a pop. And I got five different colors. I got two of five different colors. And I got like two blues, two whites, two grays, two greens, two yellows. And I would recycle through those hoes <laughs> every freaking day. 
And now, do you want to know majority of time what I'm wearing? I am wearing, let me stand up and I'll show y'all. I am wearing a men's V-neck from Uniqlo. If you don't know what Uniqlo is, it's a, um, it's like a four, I think it's men's clothes are the I 90% of the time, unless I'm filming a video and want to put on a cuter top, I'm wearing my husband's shirts. This might be his closet, but I have most of his shirts. Like the wearable ones, I they're in my closet because I'm wearing them because I need them more. Uh, but also I thought something was funny. I really don't like the way she talks most of the time. I feel like it gets into black scent territory sometimes. I don't, I, I'm not saying that for sure. It's just sometimes it seems like that to me. You guys can let me know what you think. But I like how she calls a random object pose because I do that all the time. I try not to do it in my videos, obviously, because not everybody likes that. And I know I'm already pretty dicey. Don't do not. I am going to be an ignorant white woman for a second. I think it's a Japanese store. It is an Asian store. Okay. Don't know what like descent. It is an Asian store and um, it's at, they have it at downtown Disney. It's called Uniqlo. And this is a men's shirt. Y'all, it was like $4.90. I've got two greens, two blues, two whites, two grays. In fact, I can't wait to go back to downtown Disney so I can get more of these. It's just a men's v-neck. Okay. Like it's super cute. Uh, this is a, I don't even know what size it is. This is a men's extra small, okay? I, I was getting a men's small as well, so I could like do like a little like knot. Y'all, this, first of all, it's like the best shirt I've ever purchased in my life and it was less than $5, okay? The female shirts at Uniqlo, yeah, they're like $14. These, I'm like, hold the phone, okay? I don't know about all this gender nonsense that's going on in our world right now, but I shall be buying some men's shirts unapologetically, all right? Uh you know I have to go there. You know I have to go there. I don't know what it is. I feel like somebody in conservative realm like made it a big deal that some people wanted to be called something that uh, you don't necessarily uh, know about or understand and like made it a bigger deal than it is. How hard is it? How, how, real mean this. How hard is it for you to wrap your brain around someone changing their name, which is what they like to be called. Is that very hard for you? If that's hard for you, let's look within. Um, let, let's dig deeper as to why the you care so much about something that doesn't affect you. <laughs> and what is it about people in MLMs, especially this MLM that I was in? This is just a generalization based on what I've seen. Conservative Republican people, and they do not like us queer folk. They have a big problem. My pronouns are she, her, or whatever the f you want to call me. Like any pronoun works for me. Just make sure that you're talking to me. I don't care because I don't get offended, but some people do care. And if it's more important to you to offend someone, then just continue on with the conversation about something. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. And I'm not talking about people who like forget or make a mistake or whatever. And then, you know, you figure it out, you go from there. I'm talking about people who are literally so hell bent on calling people by the pronouns they think you should have that they would rather be a about it than just be call you by your preferred name pronouns and, and move the on and talk about real issues at hand. If someone's pronouns bother you so much or gender they identify with, you're a fucking idiot and there are real issues in this world other than that. And she's the preacher's wife, I believe. This is why going to heaven with all the other Christians is not a selling point for me. Is she gonna be there? I don't wanna go, no thank you. Here's the deal, I dropped $50 to buy, I mean that's 10 shirts. And every day, y'all are always going to see me in these v-necks, nine times out of ten, unless I'm recording a video, unless I'm doing a photo shoot, unless I'm going out with the girls, and even then, I'm typically wearing these shirts, okay? Like, you're always going to find me in these shirts. Why? Because I am not going to waste my time on stand, and be dead honest, how many of us, and maybe you don't, but how many of us stand half naked up in our closet trying to figure out what to wear and what not to wear? We are wasting valuable time in our life. Okay. That's something that I've been wanting to talk about for a while is how long I stand in my closet. I'm being serious. How long I stand in my closet trying to figure out what to wear that day. I'm probably going to put on one of my husband's shirts. 
but I always have to evaluate if I'm feeling overstimulated that I'm not gonna wear a shirt that stimulates me more like the kind of fabric. Like if it's gonna make me feel more overstimulated, I'm not putting that shirt on. Am I going somewhere? Do I need to wear some sort of boob covering with it? All these sensory things I have to consider and then where am I going that I have to consider? And I think sometimes it just takes us a longer time to get dressed. I have made my wardrobe so it's more accommodating for me and less like people pleasing and what actually I like, which seems like what she's doing, but I'm not doing it so I can go uh, scam and harass people in my MLM. I'm doing it solely for my comfort and happiness. That is the only reason. Dead honest, we are wasting time and we're wasting time for the things that matter and the productivity. And a lot of times we're so focused on getting the outside right that we're not getting the inside right. Okay. And so what you wear, uh, you know, it can really be a time waster and a money pit. And when I made this shift in my life four years ago, that like, now I've just got leggings on, like right now I'm chilling, my daughter's birthday is tomorrow, so we got some like last minute things we're, we're tying up today. It's month end, I'm relaxing at home, like I, you know, a lot of women are making money right now under my leadership, and so I'm just chilling today. Um, but not, but I've been wearing these shirts with jeans, I'd be like, this is my go-to every day, okay? I don't have to think about it, it's so many times we're, we're wasting our brain cells, we're wasting our energy into things that aren't bringing us joy or they're not uh moving our life in the direction we want them to go in and so once i realized like hey you're sitting 30 minutes a day standing in your closet half naked looking at half your clothes that already still have tags on them if i'm gonna be honest it's a waste of money it's a waste of energy it's a waste of time it's a waste of space and i don't need this in my life and so i I would highly encourage you do this and it has changed my life and it has made me more productive the second thing Okay, multiple five figures. The second thing that has changed our family's life is using paper products. Okay, I'm sorry if you're like super environmentalist, uh, probably not the best thing. Okay, I own that. I'm woman enough to own that. But you guys, plastic silverware and paper plates. Yes, my family makes a lot of income every single month and we use paper products. Why? Because I value having a clean kitchen. My husband, years ago, I told him, I do not care if the whole house is in disarray, but a clean kitchen matters to me because my mother taught me the importance of having a clean kitchen. If you can't keep your kitchen clean, you're nasty, okay? That's just what my mom put in my head. And so- Something my mom put in my head early on was that the three of us were gonna do fucking chores and help out and contribute. And you know what my dad did? He also contributed and helped around the fucking house. We all make our decisions and different things are important to different people. I don't care about the paper plates and the plastic wear. I just hope she didn't do it because she, like her family refused to contribute in an effective way and help clean up things. My two year old son knows how to clean up messes after himself. And as he grows up, he will be contributing to the house. I'm not gonna go buy paper plates and whatnot. That's, that's just my opinion but I'm not gonna do that because people in my house can't clean up after myself. Like that's just not an option and it's not gonna fly. <laughs> Everyone has their own level of responsibility and cleaning up after yourself is, is each individual person's responsibility. So my husband every night cleans our kitchen and it's just a lot easier on him instead of like running, I mean, yes, we run the dishwasher every day, but like with the kids doing all this stuff, instead of like having 1500 plates and um, paper products, it makes it easier. We're less stressed. There's less energy, less time doing things that don't matter to us. Okay. Yes. We get cleaning people from time to time. Right now we're in the process of building a house. Once our house is done, we will have cleaning people consistently. We're in a rental house right now. We really don't care. We're just going to live our life. And Paper products has allowed us to be able to maintain our lifestyle without investing energy in standing at the kitchen sink cleaning. And there's so many, and listen, I value a clean home, okay? I'm not saying I don't, but there's so many women out there that want their life to change, but they're like, but I have to do the dishes. But I, you know, I don't have a dishwasher. I, and I'm just challenging you, is there a way that you can shift? Is there a way that you can move towards paper products even for a season? Because 
that 25 minutes a day that you're doing dishes, that 30 minutes a day you're taking to clean your kitchen, that could be used towards something else, okay? And again, this is just, I'm sharing uh, my lessons, my mistakes, things that I changed in my life that made, that's made our family more productive, but also has allowed us to really put our time, energy, and thought where it matters. Why am I yelling about who put dishes in the sink or on the counter? Like, let's just use paper products and call it a day, okay? And it's made things so much simpler for our family. Obviously, if we're eating steak, we're not using paper products, okay? But like, it's just an unnecessary like energy vampire in our house. And so why keep fighting that vampire? Like put some garlic out and lay that mother trucker to rest, okay? And so that has drastically changed. Uh, next is uh, chores. Listen, I know there's a lot of women. And again, I actually had someone ask, uh, it was so cute. He was so respectful. And then I went to his profile and I saw that he was a drag queen. And I was like, do your thing, boo. Um, but he was like, do you ever like talk to men? And it, I'm not feminist in any way. I value my husband immensely. Men are amazing. You can love men and be a feminist. <laughs> I know. I know who's going to tell her. You can be a feminist and be obsessed with your husband. I'm literally obsessed with my man like disgustingly so sometimes. Zine, and I do think there are things that only women should do and things that only men should do. With that being said, my messages are just geared towards women because uh, I'm passionate about helping women go to the next level. With that being said, I think a lot of times as women, we take on all roles in the household instead of developing our family, okay? so. And listen, I'm as high achieving as can be. And how many times do we look at our kids and we're like, oh my gosh, it would just be so much faster if I did this myself. Like be dead honest right now. How many of you have ever said that? Oh, just give it to me. I'll do it. You know what? Forget about it. I'll, I'll get it taken care of. Because we would rather it be done than take longer time investing and in teaching and developing. The problem with that though is in three calendar months, you're complaining that no one wants to step up and help. You're complaining that everybody else in your house is lazy and it's not. It's that you've robbed them of the opportunity of releasing things from your plate. And because we hold on to these things that someone else could do, if your child could do it at 60% as good as you, you have to develop, you have to delegate. And when we hold on to so much, we hold ourselves onto a lower level. And that sounds so silly because you're like, Mayfield, are you really telling me because I don't have my kids do their own laundry that I can't be successful? Yes, I am telling you that. Because when you won't even do that within your own household, when you have this, it all has to be mine. It all has to be my responsibility. You, when you empower that perfectionistic control freak on the inside of you, that's going to follow you into the success um, of your business, the success of your marriage, the success, everything that you touch, it's going to follow you because how you do one thing is how you do everything. And so if you show up to life with more of a, let me develop, let me empower, let me see, do teach and let me release. Like some of you guys, like I've got a 12 year old daughter. I ain't got no business doing her laundry. Now I remind her to get her laundry done but she knows how to pop it in, how to put a little pot in, how to take it out, listen for the sound, set a timer, put it in the dryer, take it out of the dryer, go fold and hang it up. She know I'm not doing your laundry. My eight year old, soon to be nine year old tomorrow, I'm not doing your laundry. I'm gonna remind you to do it. We have a set day where they do their laundry back to back, that way it both gets done. Um, but I'm not doing your laundry for you. And it's really easy as a woman to take on all these responsibilities. Um, my uh, youngest eats like a Tasmanian devil still. Like, when do they get out of that? Okay, like oldest is really cute and, uh, you know, neat. Youngest, she like, uh, the chair she sits in at the dinner table, like that's her chair. No, we don't swap chairs. Her chair is disgusting, okay? Like God bless but her chair is disgusting, okay? She is so focused on talking and laughing that food just goes everywhere, okay? So, uh, our oldest daughter has responsibility of wiping down the table and vacuuming underneath the table because it needs to get done. And guess what? I'm not doing it. I'm not doing that. The responsibility of cleaning their bathroom. I'm not doing that. Now I will do it with her because she's eight and she needs it modeled. 
Um, so I will do it with her, but I am not doing it for you because I'm not, because my time is used better elsewhere because I've got the capacity to make more money than to do these chores, but the chores need to get done, but there's no reason they can't. And I just find that there are areas in women's life where, and be honest with you, if this is you, like if you've got like, you're like, crap, I need to do this. You do, you need to stop being a control freak. And um, even if you like read leadership books, you know, if someone can do it 60% as good as you, that means you need to develop and release. You need to empower, develop, and release. And done is better than perfect. You don't have to go back behind someone and refold the towels. I have had to tell you know, the same thing over and over. Like I have to repeat myself seven, eight, nine times before she got where the towels go accurately. But guess what? I don't have to tell her anymore. And it just gets done and I can trust that process and I can hold her accountable to that. And so um, that was a huge thing that I had to pivot and shift because it was really easy for me to say like, oh, I'm doing everything, it's all on me until I got tapped out in two areas. You will get tapped out. You will become your own lid. It's the law of the lid. You will tap out on time and you will tap out on energy. Okay, and so it might seem like when you're in a rush or you're in a pinch, it might seem like, oh, I can do it all. I want to serve my family this way. That's great. And if that's how you like, if that's your mission in life is to serve your family, phenomenal. But a lot of women that follow me, you are creating a career for yourself. You're an online business owner. You're wanting to do something outside of just being that like, yes, mom and that stay at home mom. And I wanted nothing more than to come home to my kids six years ago and then I realized quickly, like, oh, I'm not called to be a stay-at-home mom. Oh, shoot. Like, <laughs> this ain't for me. And so I, like, I became a business owner and have found much success in that. But, you know, a lot of times we wonder why we don't have the time or the energy to really move the needle forward in our life like we want. And it's because we're so busy doing things that we should be empowering other people to do. And that's even applicable in a business sense. But I'm telling you my mistakes and my lessons that I had to learn. And I had to learn like, hey, my husband cleaning the kitchen, uh, even though it, it wasn't at first the way that I wanted it done, done was better than perfect, okay? So we've talked about clothes, we've talked about paper plates, we've talked about chores and delegating. The next thing was meals. Listen, this is probably gonna be like the temperature in our house and what are we gonna eat? Those, like, we're all gonna die. We're all gonna go to our grave with these questions. Like, why is it so cold in my house? And what are we eating tonight for dinner? Um, but being organized with your meals, how, how much time is wasted because you are constantly having a conversation of what to eat instead of just being proactive and planning. And then you go to the grocery store and you're not only wasting time, but you overspend because when you're hungry, you want to buy everything. When you're hungry, you buy food that you'll know you actually want to eat when you're hungry. There's that too. Also, do you guys meal prep? Because I can't even imagine meal prepping. That sounds like a horrible time. I'm not going to eat leftovers where the food has a different texture every day but it's the same food no thank you i don't like when my food coagulates into one lump sum we are trying to do better on our spending i downloaded fetch and ibotta and those apps are my bread and butter now and obviously this girl is a lot more experienced with the mom thing than i am she's further along um but i also was in childcare for nine years so i do know a little bit and i think for me, it's a lot easier to have like snacks and meals and empower the kids to get and prepare those as much as safe and like within their realm of ability to do. And that takes the load off of you and they learn how to feed themselves. It's a win-win. Everything, because everything sounds amazing. Um, and so really like controlling my time, controlling our money and really showing up each week with some sort of a plan. And now we're in a position where Jason does a lot of the cooking. And so he's a little bit more like he kind of dictates what we're eating at night and um, which is fine. Like I'm not going to complain because I'm not a chef. <laughs> if it was up to me, we'd all be eating macaroni and cheese or cereal every day. Okay. And my husband is so fucking easy to please. If you make him a meal, that's what he's going to eat. And I love that about him it is so great i absolutely cherish that i am not the same however if my man made me a meal and and he didn't ask me what i want like if it was a surprise 
that is dicey territory <laughs> because I'm, there is a very high percentage that I'm not gonna want it because I like my food to be done a certain way and sometimes he does make it for me and that's super cute and super great. I prefer to make it my own because I can change it to my exact taste and I don't feel like I'm being a nitpicky freak about it and burdening someone else with that. And so, um, but really making sure that you're, where are you in your life? Where are you wasting time and energy because you have a lid? And for us, it was just this meal, this idea of what are we going to eat? And so now being proactive, being able to know like when I'm going to be busy, hey, I'm going to be busy for the next uh, 48 hours because it's month end. And in my business, a lot of women are making money and I'm, I'm helping lead them to cross their finish lines. So for me, it's like, okay, go to Super Target and grab some pre-made salads. I don't have to think about it then. I can eat. It's convenient. It's quick. It's affordable. Those salads are bomb. If you've never been to Super Target, sis, go to Super Target. Get them salads in the deli section that are pre-made that they make. They're like $3.99 or $4.99. They are delicious, okay? And um, so that's really, really important. And then last, I would say, learn from me in a mistakes that I've made is your mindset. There is literally, if you are listening to me right now, there is no excuse not to grow your mindset. And Can MLMers talk to, to the people in their team or just generally on social media without talking about mindset? I don't think they can. <laughs> These are so good. Sometimes I put sharp cheddar cheese on them favorite meal every night is crackers and cheese <laughs> don't laugh that is a meal for me a lot of people you know don't grow their mindset and they don't develop um the vision of where they want to go and what they want to accomplish and who they want to become. They don't develop that vision on the inside of them because they think I don't have time to do it. I don't because I don't know if you're like if you think development is like this big thing. Um, but for me, I had to realize that I was over complicating it. And now this is something I've been doing for f literally four years now, five years now, January of 2017. It was the first time I like literally intentionally poured into myself. So it's been over five years now, but being able to listen to a podcast. So not only does she like to pour into other people, she likes to pour into herself. Don't make a joke, Melanie while you're in the shower, being able to listen to a podcast while you're driving in your car, no longer listening, listening aimlessly to music, but really being able to develop yourself um, while you're waiting at a doctor's office, putting your headphone in and being able to listen to an audible like these things matter. And um, uh, if you guys have any questions about this, you can drop it in the question box. OK, I will um, answer questions at the end. Um, uh, and if you don't have questions, I'm fine. Bye. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but being able to really take time and develop yourself. I think the worst thing that you could ever do is try to say that you want to move your life forward and you've got this know-it-all mindset. I know it all. I don't need help. I'm going to prove my worth. I'm going to prove myself. I don't need to be a student. And I don't know anyone who is making multiple six figures a year, uh, multiple five figures a month that isn't a student. I don't, I don't know anybody that isn't asking questions because we are not called to be well-rounded humans. And I've been saying that a lot. If you read even the Bible and what it says about the body, you know, like there's a reason my thumb can't taste and my ear can't see. You are not called to be a well-rounded human, but we are called to lead well-rounded teams. We are called to be in well-rounded communities um, because each each body part serves a certain function and gift, but when you put it together, it makes up your full body. And so like the church is supposed to be that way. Your circle should be that way. Um, your business should be that way. Leadership should be that way. You should have a well-rounded team or well-rounded community, um, but you need growth. You need development. A lot of times we can't hold on to the future version of ourselves that we so desperately want. And it's because we're not, we're not investing in her. We're not building her up. We're not um, expanding and expounding on this idea that she is worthy of it. And a lot of times we have not because we ask not. We don't ask God to expand our territory. We don't ask God to expand our vision on these things. And we're not willing to do the internal work. And there's a level of... I wasted so much time thinking that my success 
was just rising and falling on the finish lines that I was crossing. And I'm a very much a high achieving woman. The finish lines that you cross absolutely matter, okay? We put some legs to our prayers, boo-boo. This ain't just like, let me sit back with my thumb up my butt saying a prayer that God would save me. Jesus is not a genie in a bottle, amen? But that's right, mostly because he's not real. Sorry, that's just my opinion. Isn't he supposed to be more powerful than a genie in a bottle? Sounds like he's not all powerful. With that being said, there has to be some proactiveness and we have to create space for that. And I had to learn how to empower. I had to learn how to develop people and get these things off my plate so I could create space, time and energy to... I hate when people speak indirectly and around what they wanna say. Like it would make a lot more sense if she just said, I learned how to delegate and teach my children so that they could be independent and self-sufficient one day without all this flowery language. Even entertain the idea of who I wanna become, right? And so uh, I had to learn how to pour into myself. I had to learn how to develop myself. I had to learn how to uh, be able to take myself to the next level and to take that serious and to really be intentional with that. Um, What does personal development look like for you? So, um, you know, I think that whenever you're first getting started with personal development, it can look a variety of different ways. I think that done is better than perfect. Um, I don't think there's a right or wrong way. I think the idea of personal development is, is it personally developing you? Period. Is it personally developing you? A lot of people want to do personal development, but they're not changing. It, personal development should be personally developing you. There should be some fruit that eventually grows on that tree, right? Just like a, just like a plant, you put it in the ground, you, you know, you till the ground, you irrigate around it, you, you know. This lady is starting to stress me out. I've watched so many of her videos and she uses like 10 analogies in one video and I'm lost. I wish she would just use one because I can't keep up. Just say what you want to say. It's sunlight, you do all these things. It's a seed that you plant on the inside of you that for a while you're not going to see a difference and a shift in your life. But eventually you're going to see that plant sprout and eventually it's going to bloom, it's going to blossom and it's going to create the fruit at the end. That's the last thing you see on the tree, right? It's the last thing you see on the crop is the finished product, the corn on the cob, you know, whatever. It's the last thing that grows is the thing you want the most. And so that's kind of how personal development is. Um, I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do it. I think what's gonna help you be most the consistent, you know, and I've been saying this a lot, even in my leadership with the women that I lead, is that uh, you can't perfect a habit you haven't created, right? So I can't get mad at myself for not like reading X amount of pages in a book when I haven't even like I don't know, like trained myself to read every day. And so I would say if at first, you know, if you're wanting to personally develop, uh, if you like videos, go watch YouTube videos, go listen to podcasts. If you value reading books, go buy a book and spend some time, make a commitment to read 10 pages a day. But if you're like, oh, I hate books, I'm not a good reader, there's still no excuse. You can still download an Audible, right? And you can stay focused with that. So um, I think it's just a matter of finding what's going to work for you, what's going to allow you to be most consistent, and then um, go from there. I hope that makes sense. Um, how do you... Okay, so when it comes to like the chores and stuff, um, I can just tell you the way that we parent... It, the question was like, how do you get your kids to do that? Um, so uh, I don't know, you know, I'm never gonna tell another person how to parent. I'm never gonna tell another woman how to like be a mom. Uh, I'm gonna insert my opinion no one asked for. That's what my whole entire YouTube channel is. Stardom Young, that's what my parents did. And we were all doing our laundry as soon as we could carry a laundry basket. That's when my mom was like, yup, you're good. Let's get you doing it by yourself. My kids don't have a choice. <laughs> Um, we love very hard in our house and we discipline very hard in our house. We're very extremists. And, um, you know, like if you want to eat dinner, you probably going to do your laundry. <laughs> um, there are some things I will parent shame for. I, I don't think it's okay to withhold food from your children. What my parents did with me was if you wanted to have like junk food, you had to have a fruit or a vegetable first. Seems fair to me. 
I think that's fine. Not just because my parents did it, but because you need to make sure you're getting nutrients in your body at some point during the day. And that was kind of just it. They didn't not let me have dinner because they didn't do my laundry. Like you do have to feed and nourish your kids regardless of if they do your chores. That That's literally your job. It's also your job to teach them how to, you know, take care of themselves. But I, I would say nourishing their bodies comes first. Uh, you want to be on that iPad? You probably gonna clean your room, okay? And so um, we're pretty lenient. Like we really, our kids don't have a lot to do. So if they're ever in a mood where they do complain, we're kind of like, yo, like you wanna know what I was doing when I was growing up? So our kids have it good, but there's really no option. I, I think it's a matter of you're going to do this. And I think most people aren't willing to have the patience enough to be able to stick it out. Um, like, hey, this is what you're eating for dinner and you're gonna try it. And if you don't like it for dinner, you're gonna eat it for breakfast. Do you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And so I think at some point you just have to. Personally for me, I would love it if my kids eat what I make for every meal. However, I grew up with a lot of food issues and being laughed at because I didn't want to eat shredded wheats with moths in it. Yeah. Being told I was a princess because I didn't want to eat old eggs that were turning gray. I will never make my kids eat something they don't want to eat. They're not going to grow up with my sort of like traumatic experiences with food that definitely contribute to how I eat today. I will never touch a shredded wheat again in my life. I would probably cry if I saw a box of shredded weeds in front of me. I will never do that to my kids. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, you have to eat it. If you don't eat it, you can make something for else for yourself that you want that's nutritious. Like I'm making this, you wanna make something else that's nutritious, fucking go for it, man. I also make a lot of food for myself and then I share it with my son because if he doesn't eat it, I will. Or my husband will. And that's kind of what we're doing for right now. Decision. Um, how can I give value in my business? That is a great question. So I don't know if you have like specific Shelby on um, like what you mean as far as value. Are you talking about like your network? Are you talking about your team? Um, I think the way that you give value is by I don't know if you mean your product. I don't know what specific thing you're meaning. So if you want to like ask another questions or drop it in the chat, I'd be more than happy to be more specific. But um, how you give value to people, I think is by uh, providing a solution, by making people feel something emotionally. Um, I think when you make people think, you add value to them. When you make people laugh, you lighten their load, you add value to them. When you educate people, you add value to them. And I think that, um, I actually have a whole podcast I'm doing on this, regardless of what product you market, you sell, whatever, you could be in real estate, you could be selling online courses, it doesn't matter. Um, at some point you have to product of your product. And I know that sounds really silly. Like as a realtor, how can you be a product of your product? You're selling homes. Well, you can, in addition to just pitching your home that you have for sale, you can go and like educate people. You can walk through and, uh, teach people about certain aspects of home or, um, uh, different like uh, kinds of tiles you can get in your house or why you want to look for a house that has this and not this. I don't know. You can educate people on your product though. And so I think that's always, it's always the value of the idea of offering value is your giving. And Gary Vaynerchuk has a really good book that's called Jab, 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 Right Hook. Um, I value Gary V. He's not always my cup of tea. Yeah, Gary V. I... Uh, was obsessed with that guy. That guy and the redhead from uh, one of my other recent videos, those two are very hard assy, very like more straightforward kind of people, so I really lean towards them. I don't listen to either of those people now just because I don't. It, it's like when, when you are eating, drinking, and sleeping, like a certain line of thinking, when you come out of that, it doesn't hit the same and you start to see the flaws in there and I no longer s subscribe to any system of thought or institution that teaches me how to be a cup of tea uh, I didn't mean to make that rhyme but he's not but it's a really good concept where this idea of giving value means I'm gonna give to you before I ask anything in return a lot of people, when they show up to business, whether that's online business, in-person business, whether you have a physical product or like a, a store, um, all they do is ask people to buy from them or at, they're always asking from people. 
And so how giving instead of taking, that is what I would say. Value is about giving to people. And so for me, I value helping high achieving, achieving women, you know, grow their mindset, build their confidence, build their belief within themselves. I value helping high achieving. She calls herself a high achieving woman, but then in her other videos, she refers to other people as low functioning. So she's high achieving and the other people are low functioning. Gross. Women lead better, lead themselves better and lead others better. So when you look at my content, a lot of my content, whether it's on Instagram or it's on TikTok, is going to be about mindset. It's going to be about uh, empowerment. It's going to be about like belief within yourself. It's going to be about raising confidence. And that's the value that I offer. I, I give more than I ask. And so again, I don't know how to specifically answer that for whatever your product is or whatever business you're in. Um, yay, you are so welcome. Um, but that's what I would say is how, no matter what product you have or whatever you're offering, how are you offering value as a way to attract people? And then with whatever your product is or your business is, um, how are you giving people a solution to their problem? You know, I think that's the value that you can help connect the dots most when you sprinkle in. I think a lot of times in online business, we show up online and we just expect all of our all of our like online presence to be about our business or service or product and that's not effective marketing in today's world that might have worked five years ago but like no one wants to follow your separate account to see your product no one wants that people want to see ashley mayfield no i follow ashley i I know for sure two different brands on Instagram that I love. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's Nakota Tua and Cotton Flower Clothing. Why am I doing three fingers? Can I not count? Those, I love both of those two stores and I always like, I'm picking out things that I want for my future self. And I have a number of items from both of those shops absolutely treasure them but I don't care to follow the owners of either of those stores are I also don't know who they are I, I don't need them to like let me into their lives to be interested in their product I literally just follow the product accounts like they want the worlds intertwined um, so I would just say you know how are you offering value to someone how are you how are you sprinkling, how are you number one? What's your message you wanna to give to the world? That's how you can offer value. Entertain, educate, encourage, inspire. All of that is how you add value. You create that emotional attachment. You make people feel a certain way. And I get those messages. I get the messages where women are like, you know, you're so passionate, you're so inspiring. Um, uh, I love your energy. I hear that a lot. I like once a week, someone's like, I love your energy. And then once a week, someone's like, you look just like Kate Middleton, which really baffles me. That one really baffles me, but I am not mad about it, boo, because she is a 10 out of 10, okay? I'm like, shoo, y'all. I love people that tell me I look like Kate Middleton. I don't see it though. Um, so I would say that. And then you sprinkle in your business or you sprinkle in your product uh, upon your own brand and hopefully they're synonymous, they're one in the same. You know, she does that because she's in an MLM and she thinks that way because people in her MLM also told her that. And um, you provide solutions for people. So, excuse me, that would be a good thing. Okay, that was it. Any other questions? That was a really good question. All right, listen, you guys are awesome. Keep rocking out. Keep, keep, keep evolving. That's what I would say, keep evolving. There should be a constant evolution to your life. There should be constant evolution to your growth. There should be a constant evolution to your mindset. You should be always wanting to get better. Why? Because you can, you're the captain of your ship. So go do the dang thing. You don't need permission, give yourself permission. Okay, love you guys, bye friends. I don't feel loved by her, do you? This video also wasn't really directed towards us. This, cur this person has been problematic for a while, in my opinion, in this MLM in particular, blurs the lines between religion and business, which in a lot of places is a no-no because they want the workplace to be a neutral area, which I 10 out of 10 support. I think it's absolutely acceptable for people to not want discussion of politics and religion in their place of business. That is not to say that people can't wear religious garb 
like stuff that's required from their religion or whatever. Regardless of my opinion on religion, you should be able to, you know, wear a cross necklace or wear a hijab at, at your job. Like I think that should be 100% allowed as long as you're not like proselytizing at your job. And that is one of the things I find gross about this MLM is that they encourage religion or Christianity, I should say. They encourage pretty much only Christianity. That I have seen. I am, I would be very, very much pleased to see a, di a di diverse amount of other religions in this company being represented as well. I would love that. That is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I know it was a long one, but I didn't feel like making two separate videos about it. I hope if you enjoyed this video, you will give me a little like or share it. If you super liked it, that would be awesome. And leave me a comment on what you think. Did I miss anything? Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.